Okay, so you can go um, forward and backward, and for them, the Which one's forward and backward? Oh. Uh -huh, forward and, forward back. and backward. Oh, okay. And with this one. Is the pointer. Oh, great. Yes. Excellent. Cool. Very good. Nice up. Ah, you have to unmute the microphone. No, it's off. What? So, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's on. Great. Can you hear? Can you hear me? Great. <laughs> They could hear me, I think. Anyway, great to start this conference. Welcome to Sunny Trieste. It's uh, great to start with Mina Ganajic, who's going to talk about homological link, link invariance in an A brain category. All right, well, um, it's great to be back to, to, to ICTP. The first time I was here, I was a, a graduate student. so. Um, so ICTP certainly has been here throughout my career. Um, and it's great to see it uh, going so strong um, for all these years. Um, all right, so this, is, um, uh, this talk will be mainly about um, two recent papers with uh, Elise and Miroslav and Ivan, Ishwan, Vivek, Shende, who's here, and Peng, uh, Zhou. Um, and uh, it's based on, uh, on my earlier work. Um, well, since this is a review paper from the ICM 2022. All right. So the link categorification problem was introduced by Kovanov in, uh, in 98. Um, Kovanov's homo uh, link homologies are um, a collection of, of bigraded vector spaces, each of which is a link invariant. Um, his link homology theory is a categorification of the Jones polynomial, which arises as its graded Euler characteristic, a signed count of dimensions. Um, Kovanov's construction is part of the categorification program by, um, pioneered by Igor Frankel and, um, and Crane. Um, a model for, for categorification is um, uh, you get by taking a Riemannian manifold whose Euler characteristic is categorified by cohomology groups of the Durham complex. Um, from physics perspective, perspective Durham cohomologies um, originate from supersymmetric quantum mechanics with um, our Riemannian manifold M as a target space as a space of uh, exact supersymmetric ground states of a given fermion number. Um, the complex um, <coughs> whose cohomology um, um, one takes um, and the complex which you need to, uh, to, to obtain the cohomologies is the space of perturbative supersymmetric ground states equipped with a differential that, um, um, that you get by counting instant points. Um, so Kovanov similarly um, produces um, link homology groups, whoops, uh, produces uh, link homology groups by uh, starting with a complex of vector spaces graded by a fermion number and one additional grading and uh, taking cohomology of the differential. Um, now, um, the Jones polynomial is a, a special case of, uh, of a Trans-Hymans link invariant, or also known as um, the quantum group link invariant, where um, you take uh, the Lie algebra to be SU2, and you take links colored by its fundamental representation. Now, um, Kovanov's construction of these link homologies that categorify the Jones polynomial is completely explicit. Um, however, it leaves as a mystery um, the physical or geometric origin of his homology groups because uh, the construction itself is completely algebraic. It also leaves as a mystery what to replace it if um, you want to get um, invariance for general Lie algebra. Now, uh, in 2013, um, Ben Webster provided an algebraic framework for categorification um, that um, works for arbitrary, ordinary Lie algebras. However, unlike Kovanov's construction, um, Webster's is, is purely formal. There's, there's no computation that ever came out of it. Um, so, uh, the link categorification problem is to find a general framework uh, for construction of, of link homology groups, categorifying Trans-Hymans link invariants. That, that will work uniformly for all Lie algebras that, and that will tell you 
um, what these um, link homology groups are and, and why they exist, why such a strange um, question um, has a good answer. Of course, for, um, uh, in the case of the Euler characteristic of a Riemannian manifold, we know why it has a good answer, but why does this one have a good answer? Of course, string theory um, told us that it should, but anyway. So, uh, now, the first known polynomial link invariant is actually much older than the Jones polynomial. It was discovered by um, Alexander in 1923. Now, the Alexander polynomial is also a quantum group link invariant. Uh, however, um, it's a link invariant not for an ordinary Lie algebra G, but for a Lie super algebra, uh, GL1 plus 1. And the Alexander polynomial also has a known categorification, however, um, one that has a very different flavor than Kovanov's. Um, the categorification um, of the um, Alexander polynomial is based on, on Floer theory, which is um, um, essentially an A model, um, which generalizes supersymmetric quantum mechanics to one dimension up, um, hence the A model. And as such, it automatically comes from uh, both geometry and physics. It's um, based on target spaces that are uh, products of, of Hagard surfaces, uh, symmetric products of Hagard surfaces. So this theory uh, is known as Hagard floor theory. It was discovered by Orjbat and Sabo in uh, 2003. So the solution to the link categorification problem, as it turns out, is based on a theory that generalizes Hagard floor theory from uh, GL1 slash 1 to um, all other Lie algebras and Lie superalgebras. Um, it also turns out that many special features um, exist in this family of theories which um, translate to the fact that problems whose solutions you can typically only find formally now um, um, exist actually. So we'll find an explicit description of this, of this theory, uh, means of proving that it actually gives you homological link invariance, and an algorithm for computing them. So um, the theory originates directly from string theory, as I mentioned, as predicted um, in the works of Oguri and Waffa and Gukov, Schwartz and Waffa, um, Witten and also Gajot and Witten. Now, from a mathematical standpoint, this theory is, an um, is really an application of homological mirror symmetry, uh, which, which played a key role in, in formulating and so, oops, I have to be careful here. Uh, how do I get it back to the full screen? <laughs> Um, great, <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so it's an application of homological mirror symmetry, which played a key role in, in discovering the theory, formulating it, and, and solving it. Uh, in, in fact, a key role for believing that it, it should actually exist. Um, however, um, once you've solved the theory, homological mirror symmetry is no longer necessary to formulate the answer. So, um, so, hence, what I'll describe today is just the answer. Um, so, we'll, in fact, get invariants of links in R2 times S1. Um, these in, from them, you get invariants of links in R3 as a special case by simply not considering links that wrap around the S1. So, um, we'll describe um, the link in uh, R2 times S1 by splitting um, our, our three manifold into two on a Riemann surface, which is um, an infinite cylinder, R times S1 and where um, uh, you choose so that um, it, it intersects the links transversely, which you can always arrange. So such a splitting um, maps um, the link into a pair of matchings on the Riemann surface, which um, now has punctures where the two matchings meet, um, one matching coming from the top and the other one from the bottom. So um, each matching um, gives you a collection of non-intersecting curves on the Riemann surface, which end on the punctures. So now pick a um, Lie superalgebra. Um, so if G is in fact an ordinary Lie algebra, its root system is encoded as usual in the Dinkin diagram, all of whose roots you should consider as bosonic. Um, if you have a, get a Lie superalgebra, then um, some roots are also fermionic. So um, we'll color the strands of the link um, by our representations of the Lie algebra, um, which um, we take to be minuscule. Now, this minuscule condition is technical, and it's possible that one may be able to relax it, but uh, at the moment, um, 
that's what it is. So having chosen the representations that color the strengths, and um, the punctures get colored by, um, by pairs of a representation and its conjugate. <laughs> so to categorify Chinsheimer's link invariants, we'll associate to this Riemann surface with punctures a category that depends on the Lie algebra and um, uh, representations that color the punctures. The category will be a, a category of D-brains preserving A-type supersymmetry on a Calabi-A manifold um, that's associated with this data. So the category has objects which are A-brains themselves and it's morphisms that come from open strings that uh, stretch between brains and which you can compose. Um, uh, our category will have a, a cohomological um, um, Z grading, so a Fermi number, um, and an additional, grading, um, an additional grading that corresponds to Q of the Jones polynomial, and actually further gradings associated to um, holonomies of Trasimus gauge field around the S1. So the target space um, will be based on, um, on a product of symmetric products, uh, one for each um, node of the Dinkin diagram, um, on, a, on the punctured Riemann surface. So, um, um, you should think of it as just a collection of points on this punctured Riemann surface that are colored by uh, simple positive roots, but otherwise identical. And um, further, over every um, bosonic point uh, in Y in our symmetric product, there's a C star fiber okay, in the full target space. So um, the A brains on Y are supported on either products of one dimensional curves on the Riemann surface colored by simple roots, or on, on generalized intervals. So um, you can describe them explicitly. And uh, further, to, to fully specify the brain, uh, you also have to pick a brain in the fiber um, uh, for, for every um, bosonic point. So um, the target is equipped with um, a holomorphic form and, and, a, and a superpotential. So um, the category of A brains you get is a variant of a Foucault-Seidel category whose objects are, uh, are graded Lagrangians on the target. Um, uh, the, the grading which turns um, the Lagrangian into an A-brain, um, an actual object of the category, is, uh, so, is a choice of a lift of the phase of omega times e to the minus w to a single valued function on the Lagrangian. Um, now, the cohomological grading um, is a choice of a lift of phase of, of omega itself. Okay? So, for example, if you change the orientation, it shifts the grading uh, by one. Um, now, our category is actually a category of equivariant A brains uh, because um, the superpotential is multi valued. And this introduces additional equivariant gradings um, coming from a choice of its lift to a single valued function L. So now to, to this pair of red and blue matchings will associate a pair of A brains by um, replacing um, uh, the, the, the red matchings by um, sort of these simple interval type brains and by um, replacing the blue matchings, so, so these are intervals in which some collection of color points is moving, and replacing the blue matchings by, um, by uh, this let's call them figure eight type brains. Generally, they're, they, they're brains that sort of look like this, they're products of one dimensional, of closed curves. So um, the graded space of morphisms, um, uh, the space of open strings um, between the, uh, in, the, in the A model between the, the, the two brains will turn out to be um, the link invariant. So um, this, the spaces of morphisms between a pair of A brains um, are defined by Floer theory which is modeled um, after, super, after Morse theory, um, just on um, one dimension up. So the role of the Morse complex is taken by a floor complex, which is a vector space that's spanned by intersection points of the two Lagrangians. And um, the floor differential um, is that turns um, your, the, your, your vector space spanned by intersection points into a complex is generated by instantons. Instantons. Um, so in floor theory, um, the, the action of the differential on uh, one intersection point um, that takes it to another is obtained by counting holomorphic maps from a strip to your target, interpolating from, from one point to another of cohomological um, degree one and equivariant degree zero. Um, 
So um, the cohomology of the resulting complex is the space of morphisms between uh, the brains. The um, Euler characteristic um, you get for free. The Euler characteristic is the equivariant intersection number, uh, which is simply count of intersection points keeping track of gratings. Now, the fact that all the characteristic is the quantum link invariant is guaranteed to hold here by construction. Namely, uh, this follows from picard lecture's theory and um, the fact that um, the equivariant central charge function, which is a uh, generalization of the usual central charge function for A brains by e to the minus w, um, is, um, is a close cousin of the conformal block of the affine Lie algebra associated to G. Um, and the, the conformal blocks have the um, analogous formula, integral formulation as, as period integrals. This was discovered by Fagin and Edward Frankel and developed by Schechtman and Varchinkov. So um, the actual conformal blocks differ from our equivariant central charge by some insertions that don't affect monodromies and um, the statements about the Euler characteristic of um, intersections of Lagrangians. So in what follows, I'll describe this category of A-brains and how to solve the theory exactly. So we'll learn how to compute um, this homology theory for any link and um, how to prove that resulting uh, vector spaces are invariant of links. Now, um, rather than computing the action of the differential by counting holomorphic curves, for which there is no general al algorithm, um, um, there's no general algorithm in the open string, unlike in the closed string. Um, we'll rather um, explain how to sum instantons up. So we'll avoid, um, we'll, uh, we'll avoid counting disk instantons. So um, we'll, you essentially solve all disk counting problems at once by making homological mirror symmetry that relates, um, um, that relates the, the category of A, A brains to the category of B brains manifest. Now, the fact that homological mirror symmetry sums up curve counts, that's its basic property. So um, the very simplest example of homological mirror symmetry is if you take your mirror pair to be a pair of infinite cylinders. Um, so their torus fibers are simply circles, and um, the base is, a, is just a real line. Now, uh, the categories of brains on the two sides um, are each generated by a single brain. Now, these brains um, uh, look different, but their algebra of open strings um, is the same. It's simply um, the algebra of functions on a complex cylinder. Um, to see this on the A side, um, you need to uh, deal with the fact that your target space is non-compact. And, um, and mathematicians studying mirror symmetry for the last 20 years um, have discovered how to do that. Um, and essentially, it's a prediction of the work of um, also, um, uh, Hori and Wafa. But anyway, so what you want to do is you want to til tilt one of the brains relative to the other, and then inter all the intersection points of the brains become transversal. Whoops, I did it again. <laughs> you need to teach me how to do this, <laughs> and I need to learn fast. I, did, I have to now pay close attention to what you did. Rather, I should not do it again. <laughs> all right. Um, so anyway, so once you formulate the A model uh, properly, uh, then it's manifest that um, algebras of open strings on the, two, on the two sides are the same and simply equal to the algebra of, of functions on a complex cylinder. And the fact that algebras of open strings are the same turns out to mean that entire categories of brains are the same, both being equivalent to the derived category of, uh, of modules uh, of an algebra, the, the open string algebra. Uh, so objects of that derived category are complexes of modules of, of the algebra. And these complexes, what they do is they describe your geometric brain in terms of the generators. Okay. Um, because the generators are the same, once you have a description on one side of a brain as a complex of the generators on one side, you can just carry it. And the algebra of open strings is the same. You can just carry it to the other side. Um, so the two categories become literally the same um, via this middle one. So it turns out that our theories will generalize this very simplest example, which is what um, eventually will make, make them solvable. 
So uh, from perspective of why, <coughs> um, the generating set of brains are all um, products of, of real line Lagrangians colored by simple roots. Um, and um, if uh, your Lie algebra is anything but um, a GL1 slash 1, or if your root system contains any bosonic points, bosonic roots, um, then the brains get equipped with an extra structure of a local system, which comes from um, describing whatever uh, brain is in the fiber. The brain that's in the fiber is simply, well, the fibers are just a copy of C star over every bosonic point, and then in that C star fiber, you just take another real line Lagrangian. Okay, so everything interesting happens in the base. So <clears throat> the open string algebra <clears throat> turns out to be, uh, so the generator here, uh, you, you, you'll actually get um, many brains for, any, uh, for all sort of inequivalent ways of distributing uh, your real line Lagrangians in the base. And the actual generator is just a, a direct sum of those. Okay. So um, the algebra of open strings between them is, um, turns out to be computable exactly. So as a vector space is generated by um, the intersection points of brains um, um, defined by the rap fukai category. That's, um, so um, this, uh, the algebra being generated by intersection points of, of, of brains is analogous to our, our model example. You just need to interpret it as intersections in, in, in product of symmetric products. Now, um, the, um, uh, the inter these intersection points of red brains, uh, they, they, what they really represent is um, open strings that, um, that stretch between pairs of unperturbed brains. So this intersection point maps to this open string in a symmetric product. So um, these algebra elements are naturally encoded uh, in configurations of, of blue strings, um, as many as the dimension of your symmetric products, on a cylinder of unit height whose vertical direction parameterizes the direction along the string and uh, whose circle direction represents the circle in the Riemann surface. <clears throat> so the blue string inter uh, encodes um, uh, the open string um, as a path from uh, the starting brain to the final brain. And uh, the punctures on the Riemann surface get represent represented by these um, other kinds of strings that are frozen in time, the time along the world sheet. Um, so the open string algebra in, for the fibers turns out to be very boring. It's just a, po a polynomial algebra um, due to the um, nature of the fiber-wise potential. Um, so basically, each fiber alone is mirrored to a copy of C with um, C star action on it. Anyway, uh, so multiplying an intersection point um, in the base by uh, an element of this polynomial algebra can be represented by post-composing these blue strings uh, by a corresponding number of dots. That encodes the entire information about the intersections in the, entire, in the whole space. So the algebra relations come from a uh, floor product, which translates here into um, stacking cylinders and rescaling. Now, to compute the algebra structure, we'll start um, not with, uh, with y, but um, with uh, y0 that's, uh, that's y with some de divisor deleted. Um, we'll, the divisor we'll delete um, has as its main component the diagonals where um, any two points of the same color come together on the Riemann surface, along with some additional ones. <coughs> um, you'll basically uh, delete everything interesting, okay. all interesting will side. But the most important one is this, the, the diagonals. So having done so, uh, we have the equivalence of the category of brains associated with y0 and, uh, and an algebra, which is the algebra of open strings of the same brain just with a different target, the target with the divisor deleted. These two categories, they have the same object. Um, and uh, the generators of all the floor complexes are the same, since all of them are based on brains that avoid these diagonals. So you haven't lost anything as far as uh, the objects themselves are concerned. Um, and uh, the spaces of morphisms between them. 
Um, however, the algebra structure will change. So the theory with, um, uh, with this divisor deleted turns out to be very simple. Because um, since you've deleted the diagonal in the symmetric product, um, it means that the only maps that contribute to the product are one-dimensional maps to, uh, um, to, to the Riemann surface times um, the, the fibers, uh, which are easy to count. Um, so these, uh, in general, it is not possible to count maps, but you land in a place where the only maps you, that contribute are the ones that are algorithmically easy to count. Uh, and you'll, you'll learn how to do it in your first course on mirror symmetry. Um, so um, the relations, um, um, the algebra relations um, on Y0 turn, uh, turn out to say that all string diagrams must have an, um, no excess intersection or else the algebra product vanishes. So as a result, the algebra you get is an associated algebra that's graded in general by cohomological equivariant degree and equivariant degrees, which is easy to compute explicitly. I just told you the answer. Okay. Now, the theory you actually want um, is, um, and is a deformation of the theory in Y0 by putting the diagonal on this, devi this deleted divisor back in. And um, so that theory is a deformation uh, of the original one, of the theory in Y0, where the deformation parameter is the instant counting parameter. It's the guy that keeps track of the intersection numbers with, um, with the divisor you deleted. Now, so as vector spaces, um, the, the algebra, um, the simple to compute algebra and the one you want are the same, only the algebra structure deforms. So it turns out that um, understanding uh, the GL11 and the SU2 theories turns out um, to suffice to solve the, um, the case of a general G. So if you think of a, a Dinkin diagram of a general Lie algebra as having some number of bosonic and fermionic points, every bosonic node is the SU2 node, every fermionic node is a GL11 node, every Lie algebra is composed of those. It turns out once you know how to do, do, uh, solve the theory for these building blocks, you're done. Um, and moreover, uh, we're in a fortunate situation where you only need to count two single non-trivial disks. One for GL11, which is actually easy, has been done by Hegart Floyd people long ago, and one highly non-trivial disk for SU2. So in the GL11 case, um, putting the, the, the diagonal divisor back in, the algebra gains a non-trivial differential, which is a cohomological degree one operator um, that uh, removes a crossing. For SU2, um, now for all ordinary Lie algebras, it turns out that your algebras are just ordinary associative algebras, so there can never be any differential. So instead what happens is that uh, the relations deform okay, in one place. And uh, computing, uh, computing this correction is the very hard part uh, that we've done in this joint work with um, with, uh, um, with Shande, Zhou, and others. So for any Lie algebra, the same strategy works of working in a complement of this diagonal divisor and then filling back in, solves the theory. And in fact, you don't need to do any additional work. So um, for GL11, the, and the morphism algebra of these generators turn out, turns out to be the algebra that um, Lipschitz, Oswald, and Thurston um, um, constructed in the context of studying Hegart floyd theory. Um, this part is not a surprise because we've, the theory is a generalization of theirs. Um, now, a theorem um, with this joint work with, uh, with Shende is, um, is the, the following, that if you take G to be an ordinary Lie algebra, so just bosonic Lie algebra, then the endomorphism algebra coincides with the algebra that was discovered by Kovanov and Laura by Roque and then later generalized by Wen Webster. Um, these algebras are known as KLRW algebras. Um, they were discovered for the purpose of, of, of categorifying quantum group invariants. Um, and moreover, the fact that um, for G, which is an ordinary Lie algebra, the algebra coincides with this cylindrical KLRW algebra uh, implies that um, you, if you specialize to links in R3, 
which is what Webster had considered in 2013, that the invariance that this gives you will be his invariance. Because they're based on exactly the category of modules of exactly the same algebra. Now, his invariants are defined only formally. You can't compute anything. But you know they're going to be the same. Um, so um, for Lie algebras other than GLN slash 1, um, the resulting algebra turns out to be new. So now we'd like to um, apply this to the problem of, co of computing um, our uh, spaces of morphisms between um, these cap and cap brains, the former, uh, so one half of which we take uh, to be the simple interval type brains, and the other ones are these braided figure eight type brains. So um, the fact that the uh, T brains generate the category means that um, any brain in a category can be described as a complex, which is a direct sum of the generators with some differential. So this differential is a degree one operator that squares to zero, zero in an appropriate sense. Um, what it is is an open string tachyon that gives you a prescription for how to glue um, the brain of interest out of the generators. So one further simple, I told you that, there, that this theory has many um, properties that, that help make it solvable. So one, one of the key things is um, that um, the half of the brains, these cap brains, um, the interval type brains, are dual to the generators in the sense that the only non-zero morphisms from the generating brain to these, uh, to these cap brains are, um, they have sort of a perfect pairing. They're, if you want, they're, um, they're dual to each other. So, that means the following, that if you know the complex that resolves is the, um, the braided cap brains, the, the, the complicated brains that look like figure eights that you at and the braiding, uh, by uh, simply uh, taking the home with, um, stu studying the, the, the homes with, uh, with the eye brains, what you get is a complex of vector spaces. From, so, so from this complex, you get for free, with no additional work, a complex of vector spaces whose cohomology we are after. So the only work you need to do is to figure out how to describe this brain of interest in terms of the generators, as a complex of the generators. So this identification of the space of morphisms in the full category of A brains with the cohomology of this complex that you get from the resolution of the brain in terms of the generators, as its case cohomology, is a tautological consequence of the equivalence of two descriptions, um, one as uh, some, uh, some embedded or immersed Lagrangian, and the other one as, as a direct sum of these straight line brains with some maps between them. Okay. And existence of such things is the key property of the category of brains. If you want, it's the existence of such things is a key property that makes the derived category the derived category. Um, so moreover, to actually do any calculation in derived category, even derived category of B-type brains, you need to know how to find these resolutions. If you cannot find the resolution in terms of the generators, you cannot do a general computation. You can do some computation for some specific things, but a general one you can't. So this problem is there on the B side. So at this point, the B side and the A side are the same footing. So to find this resolution is in general a very difficult, difficult problem that people cannot solve. Because you have two separate problems. Well, Supposing you know the generators and you can compute um, then the morphism algebra of the generators, um, then you, the two separate problems you need to solve is, A, find which brain, um, uh, find the image of the, which, bra um, which module of your algebra the brain maps to by this functor. It's called the Uneda functor. So this functor, so you take the home of, of the, um, of the generator with uh, the brain of interest, that's what turns this guy into a module for the algebra A, for the, endomorph for the uh, um, endomorphism algebra of the, uh, of the generators. So you need to find, a, you, you need to translate your brain, your geometric brain into a module for the algebra, and then you need to find the resolution of that module. So both of these problems 
I, um, uh, uh, um, generally solvable only in principle, but not in practice. The first problem, um, oh, okay. So it turns out, in our setting, we can solve them both at once. Thanks to the fact that um, the brains we are interested in are products of one-dimensional Lagrangians. So um, I'll describe only the two simplest cases when the Lie algebra is either SU2 or GL1 plus 1. Um, the former theory will um, give us categorification of the Jones polynomial, um, the latter, um, the Alexander polynomial, and um, uh, Elise uh, Lepage, who is, um, uh, who is a key contributor here, will tell us tomorrow about how to do the general case. Um, so in both cases, um, the Lie algebra has a single simple root, which is uh, fermionic for GL11 and bosonic for SU2. So um, both theories are based on the same symmetric product of D copies of a Riemann surface. The difference is that um, in one case you have, um, uh, the difference is that um, in one, in, for SU2, the theory is bosonic, so there are some fibers um, that are not written here. And um, the, what's the potential and the holomorphic form. These fibers you can um, trade in, uh, into the, the vector bundles that um, brains get equipped with. So um, the objects are Lagrangians, which are products of one-dimensional curves um, uh, that uh, you take uh, to be non-intersecting, equipped with these local systems for the SU2 case. So um, given the link, you get, um, we get a pair of such brains, uh, a, a pair of brains, um, one that corresponds to the, um, the caps and the other one to these braided caps. So <clears throat> in both cases, uh, the brains that are associated to caps are these simple intervals that you see. There's nothing else. Uh, they're products of these intervals. Um, for the cap brains, um, the, so the, the cap brains um, will be products of closed curves whose homology class is proportional to the class of these braided caps, but not equal. Um, so for the SU2, uh, for SU2 the cap brains are actually uh, products of, of, of figure eight type brains. And for GL11, um, they're products of, of, of ovals. So um, the link homologies um, that um, start out as cohomologies of a floor differential um, acting on the vector space spanned by the intersection points. But um, we actually, what we want to do is we want to dis uh, dis um, describe these braided figure eight brains in terms of the generators. So how to do that? So um, you can describe this, the story in parallel for, for both theories. So as a warm up, we'll start um, uh, with a, uh, the d equal to one case when the target is just uh, based on the single copy of the Riemann surface in both cases. And that's fundamental to all, everything that follows. So if you have two one-dimensional Lagrangians that uh, intersect over a point, you get a new one-dimensional Lagrangian by uh, taking their connected sum over the intersection point. Okay, so from this, um, from the pair of, uh, pair of these brains intersecting, you get a new Lagrangian. As the object of the category of A brains, or um, <clears throat> the, um, the smooth brain is equivalent to a complex of uh, these two building block brains that's known as the cone of the intersection point. <clears throat> so um, so this, these two pictures, this one, when you uh, um, keep track of the differential, and uh, the smooth brain are equivalent as objects of the category. Nobody can distinguish them. So, so if your target is um, one-dimensional, then taking cones over morphisms um, has a geometric interpretation as uh, taking connected sums. So consider, for example, the, this cab, um, the cab brain in the SU2 theory that's, um, that looks like a figure eight. So you can, we'd like to describe it in terms of the generators. You want to stretch it out. So here, um, we stretch it out. I, draw, I drew uh, a stretched out version in blue. Um, so now it's clear that it looks like um, the generators where we take the connected sums of a points at infinity. Okay. So if you uh, keep track of the open strings that's, um, that you get at infinity, um, the topology of the brain is the same. <clears throat> so now each intersection point at infinity is a specific element of the algebra with definite equivariant and cohomological degree. 
And uh, to write a corresponding complex, you start with any one of the, these uh, degenerating brains in code which, uh, which, which, um, which maps you find at infinity as you go around. Okay. And then uh, you can um, reorganize the result uh, by cohomological degree to get a complex that resolves this figure eight brain with the differential that squares to zero. Um, so um, the cap brain uh, in the GL11 theory is actually even simpler. Um, it's a direct sum of just two of the, uh, of the components of the generator um, with uh, the, the differential that also squares to zero um, just by the algebra relation. The difference between the two cases uh, for ordinarily algebra, you get an ordinary complex. For uh, Lie super algebras, you get a twisted complex. Uh, this complex has, uh, the differential has uh, maps going both ways. It's a twisted complex. So more generally, so this is a baby example. More generally, the brains of interest are products of one-dimensional ones. So um, what we'll do to find their resolution is we'll work in the complement of this diagonal divisor, um, which throws out all the holomorphic maps, which are not simply products of one-dimensional maps. Um, having done so, um, the complex that describes the brain uh, as the object of the category is simply uh, a product of one-dimensional complexes. And the, those are elementary to find. It's just algorithmic. It's, uh, it's a game you can, you can you know, teach a, um, um, a kid. So um, geometrically, each map in this product complex um, uh, is a cone over intersection because the it's a map in a product complex. It necessarily it looks like something non-trivial in one place and identity everywhere else. And uh, it, it, it describes a cone over intersection point that's, well, identity everywhere except in one place. <clears throat> so having found the complex that resolves the brain in the complement of this interesting divisor, uh, finding the complex um, of the brains you actually want is a deformation problem. It's, a, it's a, a specific deformation problem because we know uh, the algebra. And uh, uh, so you get a precise algorithm that you can run in principle. So the details of the algorithm um, Elise will describe tomorrow. Um, you can run for arbitrarily complicated brains starting with um, products of one dimensional complexes, which are elementary to write down, and uh, running this defor deformation algorithm, which is an um, which is iterative in these deformation parameters. So um, this generalizes to an explicit algorithm for computing arbitrary um, UQG link homologies. So um, a theorem with um, uh, Elise and Miroslav Rupchak is that, uh, in, in the, the paper that had appeared, is that for GL11 and SU2, um, the resulting invariants are link invariants. I should say that even though hagar floyd theory has been solved, people did not solve it like this. So the solution is new. In fact, it's motivated by, by the SU2 solution. <clears throat> though we borrow some of the, the, the results they found. All right, so to prove you get link invariants, you need to prove that your invariants satisfy Markov moves. Um, now, our move turns out to hold as, equivalent, as a consequence of equivalences satisfied by these braided uh, cup brains. It turns out that proving um, all the Markov moves um, amounts to uh, proving these slide moves that you can, uh, you can swipe um, any one of the generators past your, uh, your cup brain, okay, up to some degree shifts. Um, now, since we know the resolutions of brains on both sides, uh, these equivalences are easy to prove as, and they're in fact homotopy equivalences of underlying complexes. What's important is that they're homotopy equivalences only in this more complicated theory with the divisor filled back in, okay? Um, if, you delete the, 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 if you delete these interesting divisors, you'll get a theory that's gonna have the same Euler characteristic, but it's not gonna give you link invariance. So in the, SU2, in the SU2 case, the theory reproduces Kovanov homology. Um, the part that reproduces Kovanov homology is a consequence of a theorem Ben Webster had proven. 
um, even though our formulation of it is nothing like what Kovanov did. Um, and strikingly, it reproduces Kovanov homology, including torsion. For example, if you, uh, if you take uh, the trefoil, you get a following pair of brains. Um, so you write the resolution of, the, of this blue brain in terms of the generators, and then you take the home with the, having done so, you get some very large complex of the generators. Having done so, you take the home with just this, um, with, the, with the interval brains. Out of the whole big complex, um, it's only going to pick out uh, the parts of the generators that have intersections that are dual to, the, to, the, um, uh, to these eye brains and forget everything else and cut down a complex of um, objects of your algebra, um, or if you want, complex of, um, complex of A modules, uh, down to an actual ordinary complex of, uh, of C vector spaces. The complex that you get this way is 18 dimensional, which should be compared to a um, complex that Kovanov gets, which is 30 dimensional. Um, in fact, the very same complex, if you just, um, whoops. In fact, the very same complex, if you just think of it as a complex over Z instead of C over C, um, reproduces Kovanov homology, including its torsion elements. Um, so there are some, um, Z, there's a Z2 group here. Now, in fact, the swiping move can be used to simplify you, the brain uh, you get to uh, an equivalent but much simpler one. So this is the brain you start with. Using the swiping move, you can, uh, you can uh, make it into this much simpler brain. And then the resolution reads a gives you a complex that's only six dimensional. That six dimensional complex is the minimum possible complex you can write down to get um, homology that um, includes uh, a Z2 torsion element. So the homology has, um, has uh, five elements, including torsion. So, so, um, so the theory um, that I described extends, extends to arbitrarily uh, simple Lie algebras as well as um, Lie super algebra. So we are currently developing a Sage code whose input is um, an arbitrary link, a choice of a Lie algebra and its representation that call it strength. Right now, the minuscule representation. A minuscule means that, um, that uh, all weights are in the single orbit of the while group. So, for example, for SUN, all fundamental representations, one for each node of the Dinkin diagram, they're all minuscule. Anyway, whose output is the, the link homology. And uh, as part of the, the package, you also have um, means of just proving on the computer that uh, proving these slide moves that, that prove that your theory gives, uh, that, that you use to prove that your theory gives link invariance. And um, we've, by now we've done things like, at least we'll tell you where, what's the current state of the art. Um, so, okay, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so any questions? <laughs> I thought you asked this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can ask. <laughs> so, any questions? <laughs> yes. Uh, what are the associated dualities uh, with the A brains? Can you say this again? The associated dualities with the A brains. Oh, what is the beginning of your question? Uh, what are the associated or the type of dualities in the A brains? The dualities with the A brains. Uh, could you rephrase your question because I don't understand it? Um, for example, uh, we are, uh, the D-brains are a very usual example. We use G-brain, uh, G-duality to well, transform from a D-brain, like uh, from D plus one to D or D minus one. Right. Uh, is this even a legitimate question? Uh, well, a homological mirror symmetry is an example of such a duality, but it will take one category of brains to another. Right, so, so T-dualities won't take that category of brains to itself. Uh, if you want, the, the kinds of dualities that the brain, that this category has, come from the action of braiding. So as you move punctures around, uh, the whole category stays the same while its objects get permuted, right? Um, when we, uh, when we, when we uh, I mean, people often study what happens to, uh, you know, to objects as you, as you pass through walls of marginal stability and what have you. Though that action of braiding is that. And in this setting, we can describe all of it because we know it explicitly.
question over there. Uh, do you only consider the Lagrangian A brain, or you also include the coisotropic brain? No, just Lagrangian brain. Just Lagrangian, okay. okay. Any, any more questions? So let's all thank me. Uh, actually, I want to say something. There's a part of this that I didn't tell you about, uh, which is uh, where do these target spaces come from? So uh, if you take ordinary Lie algebra, the full target space, you should think of it as a Coulomb branch of the four-dimensional gauge theory in a circle, gauge theory that's directly related to this representation theoretic data. In fact, its mirror is a Coulomb branch of a three-dimensional gauge theory in a circle with the same quiver. Okay. So the actual spaces are, you know, for, for the quintic, we weren't able to do this kind of thing. It turns out the places to look if you want to study categories of brains as Coulomb branches. Okay. What's, also, what's even more interesting is if you want uh, least super algebras, then on the B side, you get a Coulomb branch of a 3D n equals to 2 theory. Now, we don't usually think that 3D n equals to 2 theories are good theories to study, but there's a class of 3D n equals to 2 theories which are related to representation theory of super algebras, which are as nice as the n equals to 4 counterparts. In fact, the reason you would think that it should work, that such a thing could make sense, is that in the n equals to 4 setting, we explicitly break the n equals to 4 su supersymmetry down to only n equals to 2, which is the structure that representation theory uses. Right? This is what means, um, otherwise you get a theory that q is equal to 1, which is extremely boring. So making q not equal to 1 means you've actually broken n equals to 4 supersymmetry, which is just n equals to 2. Okay? And um, the A-side spaces are mirrors of these 3D n equals to 2 Coulomb branches. Um, the theory also has extension to Vermont modules, so infinite dimensional representations, which would give you not complements. And so forth. So, great. Thank you. Thank you, Mina, for the question. And I understand there's coffee and cookies outside at 1120. Yes, there will be a break in the terrace, and we can uh, reconvene at uh, 1130. That's Thank you.